are babies, cute and adorable, pure and forgivable. The early stages of life when there was nothing more than smiles and joy, and your bundles of innocence. Except for the fact that they partake in a hallucinogenic narcotic of strict illegality and at doses and concentrations far beyond imagined. <laughs> Yes, infantile associated psychedelia, the theory and speculation that all children up until a certain age experience some form of a psychedelic state due to a naturally produced and endogenous psychoactive. And before you disregard this idea as pure nonsense, one should acknowledge a surprising amount of evidence and correlation for this theory. The first point to be raised is that of dimethyl tryptamine concentrations in the brains of infants. Through numerous studies and for a good number of years now, it has been known that the pineal gland produces large amounts of this potent tryptamine up until a certain age in the individual's life, peaking during birth and then waning in concentration over the years up until adolescence commences, with levels dropping to less than significant on average at age 8. And if you're interested in these studies, then check out the work of Dr. Rick Strassman. The main point with respect to this topic being the largest period of production of DMT occurs during early infancy, suggesting that not only are they tripping, but they're tripping on one of the most powerfully psychoactive substances known to man. The second is, uh, if you were to ask any adult what they could remember from their early childhood, close to, if not 100% will tell you that they cannot remember anything at all, or that they can remember small parts, but it's a bit like a faded dream. All descriptions which draw a striking amount of similarity to heavy psychedelic experiences, where a lot of people who have dosed report the experience to be much like an ethereal dream that could maybe be recalled if they really tried, but for the most part is all but faded and lost. The third point of similarity between a baby's consciousness and the psychedelic consciousness is that when an adult takes a psychoactive, for sake of example, let's say psilocybin, the active ingredient within magic mushrooms. What surges in their brain is what babies experience constantly. What I'm talking about being neuroplasticity, which essentially means the creation of new and reformation of already existent brain cells. Something that is happening in a child's brain 24 seven until they hit around preschool age. Some schools of thought even believing that it is neuroplasticity which is mostly responsible for hallucinations, as the neural brain cells try to perceive and calibrate themselves, hallucination occurs. Which takes us to point number four, being how both a tripper and a baby visualize their world. In both the adult and child's brain, the rear portion of the central cortex is responsible for visualization with hallucinatory visions being indicated by the rearrangement or reformation of neural synapses in this region. Well, it just so happens that before a kid turns roughly age five, dependent on the person of course, this region of the brain remains in the pre-developmental stages where all the telltale signs of the adult's tripping brain can be seen including neuroplasticity and chaotic synapses. Something to keep in mind next time you make a funny face in front of a baby, they might see it a bit more freaky than you imagine they would. Leading us to point five, being how easily influenced and susceptible we are to the world around us when we're tripping. Now, for any person who has ever vaguely thought about or sparked up a conversation regarding psychedelics, the term set and setting should be something you have heard many times before. Where before any journey through psychedelia, you should prepare yourself both in mind and body, as well as your surroundings, by making everything seem comfortable, familiar and welcoming. And the reason for this is because when a person is tripping, one of the few downfalls is that their mind becomes far less reliable. Our confidence in structured thought and style fades away and we return to a much more infantile state of mind where things are very immediate and we have little to no support system to help us deal with all this in your face and immediate world. Something very much like, yes, children. 
It doesn't take long looking at a child before you've noticed almost the full range of emotions that humans are capable of. They shift and change from one emotion to the next almost instantaneously, experiencing joy and laughter one moment to discomfort or even terror in the next. Something that almost any tripper understands if they've experienced psychedelics, say in a peaceful garden, experiencing joy and wonder to perhaps the hustle and bustle of a crowded city or flashing and noisy festival grounds where everything is perceived chaotic. Also, this is why they don't recommend psychedelics at festivals. If you've ever seen anybody tripping at a festival with a face of terror and uncertainty on them, then have sympathy because you may as well be looking at a child lost at the state fair, lost and crying out for their parents. And that's it, the five main points suggesting and supporting the theory of infantile associated psychedelia. A theory still of course in speculative and ideological stages, but one with plenty of discussion by many names such as Dr. Carhart Harris at the Imperial College London, quoting and finalising. What is it like to be a baby? What is it like to be a child? Our emotions go up and down. We might be in a sort of happy, sort of ecstatic state one minute, giggling, finding everything funny and silly. Similar things happen on psychedelics. And then the next minute, there's a sudden shift and we're bawling our eyes out, you know? Similar kind of emotional sensitivities and hyper-imaginative processes occur with a psychedelic. 